The following program contains language which may be disturbing to some viewers. Lac Megantic, nestled in Quebec's eastern townships. Since it was built, this railroad has brought life to the close-knit community. But back in 2013, a ghost train rolled into town, and Lac Megantic would never be the same. July 5th was a typical sleepy Friday night, except at the Music Café. Everyone knows someone here. It's the hot spot in a town of 6,000 souls. Karine Lafontaine, a 35-year-old mother of three, is out for the night with friends and family. Just before 1 a.m., 10 kilometers uphill from Lac Megantic, a nightmare is set in motion. A parked train with no conductor, 72 tank cars long, carrying more than 7 million liters of volatile crude oil, starts rolling downhill. The brakes aren't properly set. The band finishes its set at 1.10 a.m. Geneviève Breton is out the door, heading home, but decides to go back into the bar to grab a bottle of water. The runaway train is now traveling 100 kilometers an hour. It jumps the tracks beside the music cafe, igniting its crude cargo, turning the town into a sea of fire. Monsieur! Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! We think around 50, and we know all the people there. They're all gone, the people that was at the music cafe. There's no survivor. You survive or you burn. It was too fast. They were trapped. There will be lawsuits and settlements and a criminal trial with a twist that just ended this month as a small town tries to deal with the unimaginable loss of life and trust and justice derailed. July 6th, dawn comes and the fire is still raging after the tank cars derailed. The hot zone, too dangerous to approach. In the hours after the disaster, families were shell-shocked by what they'd seen. Une demi-heure avant, j'étais là. J'avais laissé ma famille, là. When Pascal Lafontaine heard the explosion, he heads back to the bar to search for his wife, Karine. C'était à mon devoir d'aller chercher la maman de mes enfants. It's a desperate search. There are three children waiting for news at home. Je l'ai fait en pleurs. Parce que, en voyant la catastrophe de l'intérieur, je, je, je savais très bien qu'il n'avait pas Aucune chance de retrouver quelqu'un. Aucune. Je me suis réveillée en sursaut. Puis là, je me suis dit, euh, je ne l'avais pas là. Hours after the explosion, Jeanette Cameron begins to panic, trying to contact her beloved daughter with the golden hair and the golden voice. Là, j'ai texté, téléphoné, appelé, texté, texté, téléphoné, puis j'étais toujours sans réponse. Bernard Boulet's sister Marie-France lived across the street from the music cafe, but he wasn't worried, even as he watched the fire tear through the downtown core. We knew Marie-France was supposed to be at the camping, so we were not quite concerned. What Boulet didn't know was his sister put off her camping trip. She didn't stand a chance that night. She is one of the few persons which they haven't found nothing. A little piece. Nothing. Nothing of her body was found. She, she was instantly gone. Fire crews from across the region are trying to get close, on the ground and from the air. 
but it's still too dangerous to even begin counting the missing and the dead. La chose la plus dure qu'une personne a à faire à dire. Je suis parti rejoindre mes enfants et leur annoncer qu'ils n'avaient plus de maman. Their searing pain turned into smoldering anger when days later Ed Burkhardt stepped in front of the cameras. His US-based company, Montreal, Maine and Atlantic Railway, operated the track running through Lac Mégantic. I feel absolutely awful about this. We are making an abject apology to the people in this town. So, Just to uh, clarify, and the engineer, engineer, sir, are you saying it's the engineer's fault? Uh, I'm saying that, uh, that it seems that adequate handbrakes were not set on this train, and it was the engineer's responsibility to set them. And with that, the blame game had begun. So too had a bitter sense of betrayal. In a town still reeling from this insurmountable tragedy, people wondered where was the justice and who would be held accountable. Ten months after the disaster, in May 2014, Quebec Provincial Police laid criminal charges. The accused? Three local railway employees, train engineer Thomas Harding, as well as the traffic controller and the operations manager. They faced 47 charges each of criminal negligence causing death and a maximum penalty of life in prison. The trial began last fall. It was a painful ordeal. Families of the victims sat through three months of detailed proceedings, including audio and video recordings reliving the horror of that night. The jury heard recordings of Engineer Harding calling in the disaster. Hey, RJ Tom here. List of emergency, the town of Mechanics on fire. What's the problem? Is it with us? Everything's on fire. Flames, RJ, are uh, 200 feet high. It's incredible. You can't believe it here. From the river right to the station. What the fuck happened? I don't know. I don't know. Minutes later, Harding is told it was his train that he'd parked outside Lac Megantic that night that had rolled into town, unleashing this fiery hell. It's, uh, it's your train that rolled down? No. Yes, sir. No, RJ. Yes, sir. Holy fuck. Fuck. Yes, sir. That's what I got. It was confirmed at uh, 2 30. At 2 30, that the, the fuel train rolled down here. Yeah. Oh, tabarnak, the tabarnak. <laughs> and it was secure, RJ, when I left. Yeah. It was fucking secure. You, you can't believe the damage that's down, that's downtown, Uh, uh, uh No, I can't imagine. Maybe because I don't want to imagine. And I don't want to see that, but uh, it must be fucking hell. Yes, it is. Then, an unexpected turn of events. Last week, after nine days of deliberation, the jury acquitted all three men. Harding says he'll plead guilty in an upcoming federal case for improperly setting the brakes in violation of the Railway Safety Act. I'm deeply sorry for my part of responsibility in this tragedy. I assume this responsibility now, and I will always assume it. But surprisingly, many in town seem to take pity on the three accused. The verdict is okay. I said so they think that uh, uh, Monsieur Harding, Monsieur Labrie, and Monsieur De Maitre has suffered much more the last four years and a half than if they would have been in jail right away, you know. So they, they suffered the purgatory. So who would be held accountable? Many people in town pointed the finger at the chairman of the railway, Ed Burkhardt. They know about his company's track record. 17 years before Lac Megansic, an eerily similar disaster. A train loaded with fuel derails. Boom, just took off and I'm looking one big glow of orange. A Wisconsin town is evacuated as the fire burns for two weeks. It was a rail line operated by Ed Burkhardt. Federal officials in the U.S. said year after year, his railway had an accident rate 
far above national averages. Boulet, a former railway traffic operator himself, wonders why authorities allowed MM&A to run that train that tore through Lac Mégantic with a we single engineer. Because you're a small company, it will uh, allow you to operate trains regardless of the numbers of wagons, regardless what the content of the wagons with one person. So this is the main reason why my sister and 46 other person lost their life that day. MMNA has since declared bankruptcy. Its assets sold to pay its mounting debts after the tragedy. It's unlikely Burkhardt will face any legal action. Today, as desperately as people here want to turn the page, it's not easy. The trains still run through the center of town, still carrying the same kind of crude oil that ignited on that fateful night. But this week, the people of Lac Mégantic got something that was badly needed. Good news. The federal government announced it will build a bypass for the line so it will steer clear of the downtown core. But that could take years. And until then, every passing train whistle stirs up painful memories. La ville s'est construite à côté du chemin de fer. Donc toute la ville est collée sur le chemin de fer. Quand on entend un train au loin, ça peut être agréable. Mais là on l'entend dans nos salons. Ça les rend mal à l'aise d'entendre ça parce que euh, les images nous reviennent euh, une après l'autre. 